All right, so this next bit for electrolysis, we are going to just determine whether these cells are going to be spontaneous or not. So when you do this, you are definitely going to need your standard reduction table. Now I'm going to assume that you're going to be able to pull one up. I'm just going to grab numbers from notes that I already have. We have the standard reduction table in your workbook that you can use and go back to. Okay, so we're going to determine whether each of these reactions are spontaneous or not. So we have manganese and two bromides going to bromine and manganese solid. So what we need to do is we need to look up manganese 2 going to manganese, and we need to look up bromine or bromide going to bromine, okay? So let's get this. So if I look up manganese plus 2 plus 2 electrons going to manganese solid, I get a voltage of negative 1.185 volts, okay? And if I look up two bromides going to bromine and two electrons, I get a voltage of negative 1.066 volts. So I'm gonna look, I'm gonna add those two up because one is oxidation, one is reduction. So I get a grand total of negative 2.251 volts. That being negative tells me that this is non-spontaneous. So if I would want to actually run this reaction, I would have to set this up with an electrolytic cell and I would need a power source that has greater than 2.251 volts to get that to run. Okay, because I'm going to need more than 2.251 volts to push those electrons in the reverse direction. Okay, next we've got, you know, why don't you look up these, see if they're spontaneous or not, and come back and check. Okay, so I'm going to look up iron plus 2. So if I go for iron plus 2, and I am going to go to iron plus three, plus an electron, and I need to double this so that I get two electrons. That gives me a voltage of negative 0 0.771 volts, okay? And then if I do 10 plus two, plus two electrons, going to solid 10, that gives me a voltage of negative 0 0.1375 volts. So if I add those two up, I get a negative 0 0.909 volts. So once again, that is a negative voltage. So this is non-spontaneous. So I would need at least 9, 0.909 volts to get that to run. Okay, how'd you do on that one? All right, let's look at the next one. I've got nickel plus two. So nickel plus two plus two electrons going to solid nickel. When I look up that voltage, I get negative 0.257 volts. And if I have magnesium, going to magnesium plus two, plus two electrons, I get a voltage of positive 2.372 volts. So when I add that up together, I get 2.115 positive volts. So this is spontaneous. This will run by itself, so I don't have to hook up a power source on this. You do, did you do okay on that one? Okay, last but not least for this type of problem, we've got lead plus two, 
plus two electrons going to lead, solid, and I get a voltage of negative 0.1262 volts on that. And then if I have copper plus one, going to copper plus two, and I'm gonna to need to do two of those plus two electrons, I get a voltage of negative 0.153 volts. So when I add those together, I get a negative 0.279 volts. So that is non-spontaneous. So I would need a power source to push those electrons in that direction because it's not going to happen spontaneously. Okay, and last but not, this last little bit, we're going to learn how to do time with these Faraday questions. So how long would it take to electroplate two grams of gold from gold plus three solution if a steady current of 4.5 amps was used? Okay, so let's look at the equation first. So we're going from gold plus three to solid gold. So in order to go to solid gold, I'm going to need three electrons to do that. So my ratio is going to be three electrons for every one mole of gold. Okay. So let's start with our grams of gold that we have right here. So we have two grams of gold and we need to get it into moles. Okay. So if I look up on my periodic table, my molar mass for gold is 196.97 grams of gold is in one mole of gold. Okay, so my grams of gold cancel. And I have moles of gold. I'm going to use this ratio. For one mole of gold, I have three moles of electrons. So one mole of gold uses three moles of electrons. So my moles of gold cancel, okay? Then I'm going to use Faraday's constant. So one mole of electrons is 96,485 coulombs. So my moles cancel out. And now I'm going to use my power, my amps. So I have 4.50 coulombs per second, okay? So if I do this, I get 653 seconds, and I really only have two sig figs. So I could do this as 650 seconds, or I can convert it into minutes. That would give me 10.9 minutes. So if I just do two sig figs, I do 11 minutes, okay? Either one of those would be correct. So that's how long it would take, okay? So when we look at this, we would have a setup like this. The image below shows a key being electroplated with copper in an electrolytic cell. So where does the oxidation occur? Now notice, if I am going to use this to plate, that means the copper is going to copper plus two, and then the copper is plating here. So that means that the electrons are traveling this way. So electrons are going this way. So the copper electrode is losing electrons. So this is acting as my anode and the key is gaining electrons. So this is what acting as my cathode, okay? So where does oxidation occur? We have red cat, so that's reduction, and anox. So at the anode is where oxidation occurs. So oxidation occurs on this copper electrode. So this is where we have oxidation occurring. Okay. So there we go. That is how electrolytic cells work. 
and a lot of electrochemistry is used in industrial processes all the time. So if you have any questions, please come and see me or email me. Have a great day. I'll talk to you later. Bye.